שבת שלום. מה שלומך? How is your peace? How is your peace? מה שלומך? You say שלומי טוב. שלומי טוב, תודה. אוקיי, today is October 20, 2018. It's 11 of חשבן, 5,779. Today we're going to read the portion, or in Hebrew parasha, number three. The name of this portion is לך לך. It's in the book of Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 12. And we are going to read from verse 1 to chapter 17, verse 27. Five chapters. Are you ready? Yeah. Amen. And we're going to do this reading as seven aliyot or seven ascents or seven readings according to our custom. First aliyah, Yamot George Petty, Ben Abraham Abino, Likroba Torah. And everybody says, Kavod. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. <clears throat> and then Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as Tereth, Ter tree of Moray, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on Smith, still toward the south. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram was down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarah, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. They will kill me but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. Aliyah number two. Yamot, Mike, Mike Burns, Ben Abraham, Abino Likroba Torah. So it was when Abraham came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. The prince of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abraham well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male, male donkeys, and male and female servants, female donkeys and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Then Abram went up from Egypt he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him, to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. 
עלייה נאמר 3, יעמוד ג'ון מקליין, בן אברהם אבינו לקרוא בתורה. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted, up, uh, lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan that was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go forward toward Zoar. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram after... Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Then Abraham, Abram moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, uh, which are in Hebron, and built an offer, altar there to Adonai. Yes. Aliyah number four, Yamot Chris Lemon, Ben Abraham Abinu Likroba Torah. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elisar, Chedorlomer, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Saddam, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zebion, Zebion, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these joined together in the valley of Sidim, that is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Tedorlamar, Mer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Tedorlamar and the kings that were with him came and attacked Rephaim in Ashtaroth, Karnaim. The Zuzim in Ham and the Emim in Sheveh Kiriathim, and the Horites in their mountain of Seir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites, who dwelt in Hazazon, Tamar. And the king of Saddam, king of Gomorrah, king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, Zeboim, and king of Bela, that is Zoar, went out and joined together in battle in the valley of Sidim against Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elisir, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of asphalt pits, and the kings of Saddam and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there, and the remainder fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods 
of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner. And they were allies with Abram. Now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his, in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them by night, and he and his servants attacked them and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God, Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God, Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And he gave him a tithe of all. Aliyah number five. Yamot Tony de Biase, Ben Abraham Abinu Likroba Torah. Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have missed my hand to Adonai, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take, take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours. Least you should say, I have made Abraham rich, except only what the young men have eaten, and the po portion of the, t of the men who went with me. Ahir, Esco, and Manmer, for let them take their portion. After these things, the word of the Adonai came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Adonai God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? And Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born of my house is, is my heir. And behold, the word of Adonai came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he, then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards the heavens and count the stars. You are able to number them, if, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in Adonai, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Aliyah number six, Iamot Kevin Hedrick, Ben Abraham Abinu Likroba Torah. Then he said to him, I am Adonai who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Adonai, God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. 
Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them for four hundred years. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward they shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day Adonai made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt, the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites and the Rephaim, the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, Adonai has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, and Abraham, her husband Abraham to be his wife. And after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress, mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. Adonai judge between you and me. And so Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of Adonai found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur, and he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, why have you, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. The angel of Adonai said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. And the angel of, Lord, of Adonai said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of Adonai said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because Adonai has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man, and his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the name of Adonai, who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Be'ir Laharoi. Observe, it is between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. When Abram was 99 years old, Adonai appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. Aliyah number seven. Yamot Jonathan Smith ben Abraham Abinu Likroba Torah. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and in their generations were everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give you and your descendants after, after you the land which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And, Abraham, and God said to Abraham, For you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, throughout their generation. 
This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins. And it shall be a sign of covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised, every male child in your, in your generation. He who is born in your house or brought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. He, he who is born in your house and he, and he who is brought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And then God said to Abraham, As for, your, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but, or Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born for to a man who is one hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety, ninety years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. And God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear your son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I bless him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall be... We get twelve princes, and I, I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. And then he finished talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So Abraham took Ishmael, his son, who, was, who were born in his house, and all who were brought with his money. Every male among the men of Abraham's house to circumcise the flesh of the foreskins on the same day. And God had said to him, Abraham was 99 years old when he circumcised, and he was circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin. Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That same day Abraham was circumcised, his son Ishmael and all the men in his house born in the house were brought with or bought with his money from a foreigner were circumcised with him. Reading of the Maftir, Yamot Cliff Beckner, Ben Abraham Abino Nikrobatora. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very same day Abraham was circumcised in his son Ishmael, and all the men of his house were born all the men of his house born in the house or bought with money from a foreigner were circumcised with him. The reading of the prophets, the Aftarah. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר בחר ממבין טובי, ורצה בדברי חנך הנאמרית באמת. ברוך אתה אדוני הבוחר בתורה, ובמשה עבדו, ובישראל עמו, ובמביין העמד אל צדק. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who chose good prophets, and was pleased with their words, which they spoke in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, who chose the Torah, Moses his servant, Israel his people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness.
Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall be shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Keep silence before me, O coastlands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together for judgment. Who raised up one from the east? Who is righteousness called him to his feet? Or who in righteousness called him to his feet? Who gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings? Who gave them as dust to his sword and his, as driven stubble to his bow? Who pursued them and passed safely by the way that he had not gone with his feet? Who has performed and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last I am he. The coastlands saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid. They drew near and came. Everyone helped his neighbor and said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the craftsman encouraged the goldsmith. He who smooths with the hammer inspired him who strikes the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. Then he fastened it with pegs that it might not totter. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend, you, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my hand. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold all those who were increased or behold all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them. Those who contended with you, those who war against you shall be as nothing, as a non existent thing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small, and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Reading of the Apostolic Scriptures. Yamot Teresa Vining, Batsara Imenu Likrobabrita Dasha. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו את דברי המשיח ישוע ואת דברי השליחיו. ברוך אתה אדוני נותן את דברי המשיח ישוע. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the words of Messiah Yeshua and the words of his apostles. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the words of Messiah Yeshua. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted when he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are made of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, but the, for, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who was the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Amen. Boy, we're flying through time and history, aren't we? Yes. Well, this week's uh, Porsche reading is entitled Lech Lecha, and it means what? Go out. Or more literally, go for yourself. Get yourself out of your homeland to the land I will show you. The first 11 chapters of Bereshit cover everything from the creation account to the fall of man to the first and second generations, the first murder, the first atonement, a series of lengthy genealogical lists, the world flood, the Tower of Babel, the first biblical covenant cut between the eternal God and mankind. We have just rushed through 2,000 years of history. And it's very important to notice that there is a godly line of Seth that begins to march through history and through time. This godly line is contrasted with the ungodly line of Cain. The God, ungodly line of Cain were very accomplished people, but set out to do what man is prone to do, and that is to set their own course, walk their own path, establish their own destiny, enjoy their short-lived life here on this earth to the full. Aye, but there is another genetic line that is remarkable in its own way and quite different from the majority of human history. And so we begin to read about the men whom God chose to fulfill his calling through this godly line that began with Seth. Now, we center upon one man and his story, his journey as he responds to God's 
call upon his life. It's important to notice that everything begins with his calling. His call. His story begins to unfold before us. And, and you have to be really amazed at what you read. This one man and his wife are the beginning of a large family. It will become a chosen nation. His is a journey from obscurity to becoming a key figure in human redemption. In the next 13 chapters, we learn of this man, Abraham, his tests, traditionally ten, his troubles, his victories, his shortcomings. We learn a lot about this one man. Paul refers to Abraham no less than 29 times. James mentions him in his letter in chapter 2. The writer of Hebrews also mentions the faith, the faith of Abraham. And so, God cut covenant with him. And this covenant extends to the end of the ages. In Paul's classic letter to the congregation in Galatia, Paul spends over four chapters arguing that the law never saved anyone. That's the context. He gives one argument after another to prove his point. And Abraham is the first of his biblical arguments. He follows this by pointing out that circumcision came years after God declared that Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Think about it. Abraham believed God. Well, the Hebrew word for believe is aman. comes from a root word that means establish or confirm. In a sense, when we confirm this covenant in our lives, we establish it as the foundation of for our lives. This is one of the most basic and foundational truths in, in, in the scriptures. It's connected with coming into a personal relationship with the eternal God. As Paul says in Galatians 3, even as Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, know then that those of faith, these are sons of Abraham. And the scripture is foreseeing that God will justify the nations by faith, preach the gospel before to Abraham. All the nations will be blessed in you, God tells Abraham, so that those of faith are blessed with the faithful Abraham. This is the one we read about this week. The foundation of this, uh, the foundational meaning of this word, aman, is certainty. Certainty. And not what is often meant when the world uses this word as something Hopefully true. The word amen is a derivative 
It comes from this root word. And we use it to affirm something that has been said. We say, Amen to it. The word imuna, faith, also comes, is derived from this root word. And we use it to express our word, faith. You see, to believe, to have faith, is to know with certainty it's true. Abraham believed God. That believing really does begin to impact our living. And what a man of faith. God calls Abraham, and Abraham obeys. He doesn't say, let me think about it, God. Uh, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with that, God. God calls Abraham and he says, yeah, okay, I'll leave everything and go somewhere you haven't told me yet. What a simple act of obedience. That was. And yet it changed the course of human history. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Were cast out of the garden. Mankind had disobeyed and was nearly wiped out by the flood. One man found grace in the eyes of of God. Mankind began over again, but became arrogant and disobedient, were scattered through the confusion of tongues, of languages. And, and, and then one man changed the course of history. Abraham. Abraham's call was a call of faith. It turns out to be de a, a very demanding as any call of faith is. The call of faith is not for selfish ones. The call of faith is just the beginning. The trials become more difficult as Abraham as he progresses along in his journey. The first and the last seem to be like bookends that frame his life, a life of obedience to God. At 99 years old, the Lord appears to Abram and says to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me, and be blameless. That is, I am El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai. The all-sufficient one. That was Abraham's God. The all that you need, one. This word is used 48 times in the Tanakh, and seven times with the word E-L, L, a word for God. This is the first use and the beginning of a series of words for God, like titles for God, beginning with E-L. This name for God is translated in the Tuergent as all-powerful. The rabbis said that this word is made up of two words, shah meaning who, and dai meaning enough. The combined meaning would be one who is sufficient, 
one who is in us. We had a professor teach who said, the God who is more than in us, and that's our God. In fact, he brings out that it's related to the Hebrew word shad, as in shaddai, meaning my breaths. Either way, God is more than enough in your life. Notice that here with Abraham also, we have the three words we found to be true for Noah. Nor was righteous, the adjective, and when Abraham believed God, God counted it for righteousness, the noun. Noah walked with God and was perfect or blameless. Tamin. And God told Abraham to walk before him and be perfect or blameless. Tamin before him. God doesn't ask anything of you that he does not give you the power to do. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, faithful is he who calls you who will also do it. And also Philippians 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Abraham believed. And when he believed with this certainty and all that that word means, he believed unto salvation. And so the covenant was established. Now God said, now, walk before me so that the covenant will be confirmed in you. And you can pass it on to your son. And he can pass it on. And he can pass it on. Be perfect as you walk before your God. Because he's watching you. We mention this from time to time. I, I, I think it's a good understanding of the, of the commandment, fear God. For explanation, he's watching you. And he's watching me. And, and, and so God first reveals a new name for Abram and then reveals the obligation to be perfect. That is blameless, not sinless, but perfect before him. Abraham had been walking before God, but now it would be a, a closer walk, a walk by faith in utter dependence on him for everything that he needed or wanted to walk in all of his commandments and ordinances and to command his children after him to do the same thing. It's okay to see that your children follow God. And you see that Walking before him reveals his all-sufficiency in our lives. I am El Shaddai. This is the life of those unconscious decisions that you make to live in his sight, to walk the ancient pathways, which are good ways. To always be asking, Lord, what do you want me to do right now? Because he's all sufficient for your needs. 
He's all you need. And you can live in the confidence that this is rock-solid truth. You can build your life upon this truth. God isn't. God is all-sufficient for your life. All you need. And you can live in the confidence that this is true. Can we but grasp the full scope of this truth? I am El Shaddai. Your God is all sufficient for any need that you have today. Your God is all sufficient for any problem in your life today. Our God is all sufficient for any building that we need today. And as we said last week, the word walk is often used as a metaphor for our lives. Our walk. In both Enoch and Noah, they walked with God. And they walked in communion with their God. They walked in fellowship with their Creator as Adam and Eve walked in fellowship with their creator in the garden. The apostolic scriptures reading in Luke tells a beautiful story of two disciples on their way back home to Emmaus. They walked with him unknowingly and they talked with him. Their hearts were warmed within them as he spoke to them, opening up the scriptures to them. When they got home, they invited him to stay and, and eat with them. And in the breaking of the bread, they knew him. It was him. And he disappeared. I saw what sometimes happens. you know he is there? Do you sense his presence? Of course he's there. But is that all there is for us? Do you know the fellowship? In the midst of the complexities of life, in the midst of the perplexities of life, in the midst of monotonies of life, do you realize your walk with the Master? He's there. He's there. Wherever you are, you may realize His presence with you. It's a blessed experience, full of His peace, full of His power, full of his rest, full of his satisfaction. We live here in the system, but he transforms our world. Lord, you are our dwelling place in every generation. It never changes. We are not yet home but we're home in a sense every single day. Enoch walked with God and, and God took him. The walk has a certain prophetic aspect to it. A certain promise of the olam haba, the coming eternity. And to Abraham God says, I am the all-sufficient God. Walk before me and be perfect. The invitation or, or is it a command? Says to each one of us, walk before me. 
His eyes are upon you for good. The realization of the presence of God also carries uh, with it the idea, as we've mentioned, He's watching. This always watching you causes you to become more holy, even as He is holy. This thought that He is watching and weighing all of your thoughts and words and actions is absorbed, as it were, in our walk with Him. Conscience sense of His presence. Only as we walk with Him can we bear the scrutiny of walking before Him. When we are sure of the with Him, we can bear walking before Him. Uh, Let me repeat this. Only as we walk with Him can we bear the scrutiny of walking before Him. And when we're sure of the with Him, we can bear the before Him. Literally, walk before me and you will be perfect. You will be blameless. This is a promise as well as a commandment. And if we were to take the words in Deuteronomy 13.4 where Israel is commanded to walk before, walk after the Lord, their God, our walk is simple. Just follow the Lord. Just walk after Him. It's when we run ahead, impatient with where we are at the time, that we lose our way. He is our God. Just follow. And God perfects us in time. The psalmist knew what it was to follow after the Lord, for he said, my soul, my soul follows hard after you, O Lord. And so pressing on to know the Lord better, pressing on day by day is the outcoming of the outcome of walking with Him and walking before Him. Eagerly desiring to be closer to Him is really our goal. Philippians 3, not that I already received, I already have been perfected, Paul teaches us, but I press on. And each one of us needs to heed Paul here. But I press on as if I also may lay hold, inasmuch as also I was laid hold of by Messiah Yeshua. Brothers, I do not count myself to a late hold, but one thing I do, forgetting the things behind, stretching forward to those things before I press on after a mark for the high, the prize of the high calling of God in Messiah Yeshua. This is the highest calling, is the high calling of God, which is in Messiah Yeshua. His sheep follow him. And this is the goal of our walk, Yeshua. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, I'd like to ask you a question, as I ask my own self this question as well. Do I have a passion for Yeshua? Is he the center of my life? As I follow hard after my God, Do you have a passion for Yeshua? And each one of these 
has its own dynamic. Genesis 5, it says, Enoch walked with God. In Genesis 17, it says, Walk before me and be perfect. And in Deuteronomy 13, it says, You shall walk after the Lord your God. And each one has its own dynamic as we press in to know the Lord better and better.